Hello, good evening to all our listeners. A very warm welcome to the VAR show, the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in the world. Yeah, I like BFM 91.2 megahertz. My swagat sir, your show every Friday at 7 p.m. air on sir. You can also tune in through the Hamro Patra app and also through www.bfm912.com. There are a lot of options. If you miss the live show, you can go to our Facebook page, the VAR show, and also. listen or uh, whenever you have time we have sashi with us who will look after the technical aspects of the show today so there is no confusion today we have only sashi with us so what's in the show transfer premier league la liga serie a bundesliga trivia songs you name it we have it so before we start the show i'll read out some statistics so you can say it's a stats it, they are part of history now Sergio Aguero has been named Premier League player of the month for the 7th time more than any other player in the history the Argentine striker wins the January prize after scoring 6 goals and assisting one one another Jurgen Klopp has been named as the Premier League's manager of the month for January in the process he has set a new record for all, for the most wins in a single season he has won the award 5 times this season that's amazing a mammoth number Klopp has now won a total of 8 Premier League manager of the month in his career at Anfield. Only Sir Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger and David Moyes have won more manager of the month in their career in comparison to Klopp. So as I said we also have songs we'll start the show with a song titled Smoke Shisha Play FIFA by Jord Indians and then we'll move on to our first segment. So enjoy the song and I'll see you after the song. So hello guys welcome back to the Premier League this is our first segment and today we have another host with us Mukund Agrawal will be doing the Premier League section so the next voice you hear will be Mukunds so uh, so to begin with the first segment we have Premier League so the first match to kick off the weekend was uh, Leicester City versus Chelsea which ended in a draw unexpected out of the syllabus you have seen Rudiger uh, had Harvey Barnes uh, and yet again Harvey Barnes Chilwell and again Rudiger completing the score line so 2-2 Rudiger got in the first goal of the match and as well as the equalizer so that was out of the syllabus uh, good to see a, it was a good match to witness so they shared points uh, they still be on sec- third position and the fourth position in the table so next game was much more expected one Liverpool taking on Southampton a comfortable victory for Liverpool yet if you saw the game not a comfortable first half for liverpool it was some competition there but the score line suggest okay good three points for liverpool 4-0 on the score lines as expected mo sala jordan and uh, jordan henderson joined the score line scoring the second goal of the game but the standout performance for me that weekend was certainly bobby fominio three goal uh, three assists in the game so he stood out among the rest and oh yeah uh, alex oxlade chamberlain opened the score line just minutes into the second half so the third game bournemouth versus aston villa bournemouth got in two goals within the first 45 minutes of the game so uh, with with uh, billing scoring the first goal of the game in the 37th minute and nathan ake doubling the lead right before the half time break and they aston villa could only manage a consolation goal in the second half of the game so uh, so aston villa so Bournemouth stand at 16 position with 26 point and Aston Villa stand at 17 position with 25 points. Newcastle United and Norwich City. Puki has not been up to the mark as he was in the beginning of this season so that shows for a lack of confidence maybe but you would say the scoreline it ended as 0-0 nothing much in this game uh it was not much eventful so theo walcott score okay so next is west ham versus brighton this was actually perhaps i feel the most interesting game of the weekend uh, west ham going in brighton coming back west ham going in again yet again brighton coming back yet again but it was i feel the most de- the deciding moment of the game for me was the last very last minutes of the game wherein a wonderful save 
from the West Ham keeper denied Brighton all three points into the game. So it was Snogras who scored twice into the game and Ren Murray who got in equalizer in the 79th minute. So that was it for the game West Ham and Brighton. Next in Crystal Palace versus Sheffield United. So out of everyone's expectations, I think Sheffield United was written off like as in they would not have people would not have expected what Sheffield United is turning out to be this season. They are in the sixth position with 36 points, wherein Eagles are languishing behind, very behind at 14 14 position with 30 points. So Crystal Palace would have expected three points out of this game, but uh, not to be so. With Guetta scoring in the 50, eh, with Guetta conceding an own goal in the 58th minute. Next up, we have Manchester United versus Wolves. Wolves, I think, uh, were very much expected to win the game and get all three points against United, but uh, not to be so. It was 0-0, and yes, uh, it was an official full-time, full-time debut for Bruno Fernandes, who recently joined the Manchester United squad. So, Wolves are at the fourth, at the eighth position with 35 points, wherein United are at the seventh position with 30, 35 points as well. Next up, we have Burnley and Arsenal. So, two big giants of the past are now not at par with the other clubs. So, nothing much to talk about this game as well. Arsenal are in the tenth position with 31 points, wherein the wherein Burnley as well with 31 points, but at the eleventh position. Last game and a big game of the weekend we had was Tottenham and Man City. So Mourinho ended up on the winning end of this game with 2-0 victory over Manchester City with, with Steve scoring in the 63rd minute and the Asian King Song doubling the lead in the 71 minute. He has yet again been exceptional in the game as of now. As of now in the entire season he has been in. So Tottenham has 37 points and and in the fifth position, while City are second with 51 points. So that was uh, Mukun. So I think from what he has said, so definitely uh, the one that stood out for me was Tottenham winning 2 0 against Man City. So that was probably the nail in the coffin in the uh, City's title challenge. I mean, now they are 22 points behind Liverpool. And also, it was a quintessential Mourinho result. I mean, Mourinho likes pulling out. Rabbits from the hats in all in games like this. So now we'll have a second song before we move on to the next segment. Enjoy the song and I'll see you the song's name after the break. And you have to guess the song's name as usual. So see you after the break. Hola, bienvenidos de nuevo al bar espectáculo. That's that's just a way of saying in Spanish. Hello, welcome to the VR show. So again, you'll be hearing Mukun's voice. He'll be co- he'll be covering La Liga and Bundesliga. So to begin with the La Liga, Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid. The Madrid derby ended as one 0 for Real Madrid's favor. Karim Benzema scored the only goal in the game in the 56th minute. So to pile up more misery on the City rivals, Real Madrid had 16 shots with five on target, while Ad- Atletico Madrid only managed four shots with one on target. Madrid also had the Lions share of position with 65% of the position in the entire game which means Real Madrid will now be top of the table with 49 points while Atletico Madrid will be languishing at the 6th position with 36 points. Madrid have now been dumped out of the Copa del Rey yesterday. Okay, so this can be a point of later. So well now we move into the second game. Barcelona winning 2-1 against Levante. The headlines were grabbed by a teenager, 16-year-old teenager, Ansu Fati. Ansu Fati opened the scoring in the 30th minute before he scored again in the 32nd minute to double the scored line. Both, both the goals were set up by none other than the maestro Leo Messi. Expected goals at Barcelona at 3.8, 3.38 to Levante's 1.10. The result means Barcelona are in the second position with 46 points and Levante are in the 13th position with 26 points. Both the Giants, Real Madrid, have Barcelona have been knocked out of the Copa del Rey yesterday, losing out with the quarter-final rounds. Sevilla and Deportivo Alves drew 1-1. Jose Lu opened the scoring in the 70th minute, but the lead did not last as 
Ocampos equalized by scoring the penalty in the 77th minute. Expected goals had Sevilla at 1.89 to Alves 0.99. The draw means Sevilla are in the 4th place with 39 points and Alves at the 15th position with 24 points. Athletic Bilbao and Getafe ended up in 0-2 in Getafe's favour with Damien Suarez scoring in the 36th minute while Mata double, doubling the score line converting the penalty in the 50th minute. Getafe are in the 3rd position with 39 points and Bilbao in the 9th position with 31 points. So now moving into the Bundesliga, the first match Borussia Dortmund vs Union Berlin ended up in four, ended up as 5-0 in Dortmund's favour. Yet another 5-goal yet another victory for the Dortmund side. Uh, uh, assisting King, you can say, Jordan Sancho opening the scoring in the 13th minute before a superstar addition to the Dortmund squad, Eric Haaland, doubling the scoreline in the 18th minute. Marco Ruiz scored a penalty in the 60th minute to put the game to an end. You can say, say an end to it, okay, but they, it was not to be so. They continued the scoring spree and Alex Witzel scored in the 70th minute and Eric Haaland got his second for the game, second of the game in the 76th minute to mile up more misery for the away team. Eric Haaland has now got 7 goals in his last 3 games. Also Ruiz is out injured for a minimum of 4 weeks. So that's a sad point for Borussia Dortmund in this entire season as of now, I think. So now moving into the second game, Mainz, zero, Mainz 5 and Bayern Munich played off against each other with Bayern Munich winning the game 1-3. Bayern continue to their revival again under Hansi Flick. They have now won their last six games on the bounce and look like they will be retaining their crown. Lewandowski opening the scoring in the 8th minute before Thomas Muller doubled the scoreline in the 14th minute. Alcantara added their third in the 22nd minute. Jeremiah St. Joe grabbed grab one, one for the host on the strike of halftime. Thomas Muller has created the most clear-cut chances in the Bundesliga this season with 16 chances created. Bayern are top of the table with 42 points and Mainz are in the 15th position with 18 points. So, and last and final game that we are covering for Bundesliga is RB Leipzig and Mönchengladbach. So that ended on 2-2 on how the tables have turned. A few weeks back, Leipzig looked like they were heading towards their first title but a loss and a draw in the past two weeks means they now trail behind Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich by one point. So play opened the scoring for the away team in the 24th minute before Jonas Hoffman doubled the scoring score line in the 35th minute. Patrick Skiff pulled one back for the host in the 50th minute before Christopher Nkunu draw, grabbed the equalizer in the 89th minute. The draw means Leipzig are in the second position with 41 points and Motion Clan back are in the fourth position with 39 points. So that's it for Bundesliga. Oh, how the tables have turned in the Bundesliga. You know, a few weeks back they were like Motion Clan are going to win, then RB Leipzig under Nagelsmann, and now Hansi Flick has come up to the forefront and he's reviving the Bavarian Giants. And they are now favourites to win it because Bayern Munich always win the title, don't they? In the last seven years they have won it on the bounce and now they'll. Probably like to make it eight on the bounce and also Coutinho will not be renewed, I think, and they have to search for a new playmaker, especially with Thomas Muller being linked away. So now we'll play a song titled. Okay, wait, I'll not say the title of the song, I'll say you after the break. The song for the previous. Before the previous break was She Doesn't Mind. So guess the song for this, this song, and I'll see you after the break. Hello, welcome back to our Serie A segment. So, the song that we played was Club Can't Handle Me. And one more thing, when you, whenever you listen to our song, please, you just can't listen. You have to sing along. You have to be loud enough. You have to show your craziness while singing the song. We take a lot of pain to search the song and play it. Please, you have to sing along loudly. Okay, so we'll move on to our Serie A segment, which again will be hosted by our co-host Mukun. So to begin with the first game was Udinese vs Inter Milan which ended up in Inter Milan's favour 2-0. So now Romero Lukaku seems to be yet again looking like the Romero Lukaku we knew at Everton. 
He opened the scoring in the 64th minute and yet again converted a penalty in the 71st minute. And so to inform of the points table, Inter Milan are second with 51 points, where Udine sit in the 15th position with 24 points. Second game we had Old Lady Juventus vs Florentina, 3 0 The routine victory for Juventus. Cristiano Ronaldo scored penalties on double occasions in the 40th, 40th minute and yet again in the 80th minute before Matthias Gillette added icing on the cake in the very touchy moments 91st minute of the game. Juventus are first with 54 points and Florentina in the 14th position with 25 points. Lazio vs Pal ended up as 5-1. Lazio seemed to be very comfortable against Pal in this game. Ciro Umeval and Felipe both grabbing brace in the first half itself. You got to watch Imobal's one a goal which he seemed to have been making a mockery of the entire defense of Spal. It was a wonderful goal, you can watch it on YouTube. So, and it was only then, okay, uh, so and later they only grabbed a consolation. Missouri Lee scored one for Spal in the 65th minute. So, the result means Lazio are third with 50 points and Spal sit in the last position with 15 points and Verona are in the 9th position with 31 points. Fourth game we have was Susolo vs Roma which ended up not as per expected it ended up as 4-2 in Susolo's favour so with we had Caputo scoring in the 7th minute the opening goal in the 7th minute while doubling the lead in the 16th minute so and now we had Zuricic scoring in the 26th minute before Roma seemed to have been making a mini revival uh, with bringing with pulling back two goals from Eden Dzeko and Veretout but it seemed it didn't seem to be so Roma couldn't make a comeback as Boga ended up all their hopes of making a comeback in the 74th minute which means Roma are in the fifth position with 39 points and Suzulo in the 13th position with 26 points so another league which is being Heated, you know, the title race in Syria is heated this season much more than the others. Juventus are winning, Inter are winning, Lazio had the chance to leapfrog Inter, but I think they don't want to win. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so I, as it's the VR show and we talk about facts and statistics, I'll say some statistics about Syria. So, since we spoke about Sassuolo last, talking about Sassuolo, Sassuolo have attempted the fewest long balls per game in Syria this season with 40.45, so they... Definitely are uh, nowhere close to Samurai Dice's team. So Samurai Dice will probably not get a job at Sassuolo as of now. Lazio have scored the most penalties in Serie A this season with 10. Maybe Ronaldo wants to sh shift sides. So moving on, we'll talk about Ronaldo. Ronaldo has the most shots of target in Serie A this season with 31. It's not a surprise because he takes almost the most shots and that's how you get goals, you know. You take shots from position of maximum opportunity and you will get goals and the last fact is Jesse Joronen of Brescia has punched the ball clear the most number of times this season with 18 so being a goalkeeper you need to punch the ball but you know that can come back to haunt you if it goes to an opponent so now we'll play our fourth song so do you want me to say the song's name if I, I'll say the song's name but in one condition that you have to sing along because even Sashi is saying that, you know, we will not play the song until these people sing along. Okay, the song is titled Locked Away and then we'll have a break and then we'll move on to our last segment. So enjoy the song and do sing along. Hello, welcome back to our last segment where we will probably discuss other leagues like the French League and the Portuguese League for this week. Before that, I will just give you a instant news, okay? So Pep Guardiola has addressed Lionel Messi's rumours, you know, like he, was, he had a fallout with Eric Abidal, his former teammate, and there were some accusations and this and that, okay? So Pep Guardiola has poured cold water on suggestions that Lionel Messi will leave, will leave Barcelona and join Manchester City in the summer. And Messi's contract is coming up, you know, it's going to end, I think, next year. And there were always talks with... Like, you know, it's, of course, if uh, Messi comes to Bar uh, City, it will, the marketing campaign will blow off. Like, you know, for City, you are getting one, like, maybe one of the greatest of all times. And not only the marketing side, Guardiola plus Messi, what a combo. Okay, I'll not waste much more time. 
fantasizing about the combination but we'll go into french league and like the rest of the show mukun will handle that so first uh, just covering the french league we have nantes versus psg which ended up in psg's favor 1 to 2 goals mario kadi opened the scoring in 29th minute and theo carrer doubled the scoring in the 50 57th minute psg are in the first position with 58 points 12 points clear of the second placed marcel and for the portuguese liga we have benfica versus belenenses sad with benfica winning the game 3-2 and in the first position with 54 points 7 points clear of the second place porto okay so that was the league it was like rest of the leagues and it was short and cute and from mukun coming from mukun it was, it sounded much more better i think then i would deliver it so now as usual what we are doing we are talking about the rules of the game so that people are educated about the rules and they are involved much more in maybe in the viewership or playing so i'll just say again like as usual for the last two weeks i'll be saying some lines if you all have heard it please hear it again i just want to say it soccer rules and regulations are maintained and updated annually by the international football association board ifab so if i use the short form you know what it is the board consists of eight members four of which come from fifa and the other four come from england scotland ireland and wales all countries that contributed to the development of the sport ifab okay i'll again repeat the full form maybe some of you all did not hear international football association board currently acknowledges 17 laws of soccer or football that are the standard for any professional or international matches played last week we discussed the second law of the game which is regarding the ball and before that we discussed the first law that was regarding the field of play this week we'll discuss the third law of course it's a chronological order you know and the third law is about the number of players so i'll just read the law matches are generally played between two teams of 11 aside the goalkeeper is included in the 11 players total if a team cannot field at least 7 players at at match time the game is a forfeit teams of fewer than 11 aside can often be seen in youth leagues where smaller teams are used as developmental tools you know like the smaller a game like you know if you play one on one you have more of the ball and you uh, improve skills if you play two on two you have l- less of the ball as in comparison to one on one but then it keeps on increasing like that the more the number of players the lesser you have the ball even the likes of xavi iniesta ronaldo in their form add the ball for a maximum of 90 seconds you know like those players had a maximum of 90 seconds you can understand how much other players have so fifa sanctioned matches are generally limited to three substitutions per match the exception being in friendly matches where you can substitute hell lot of how much ever you want most youth, youth leagues allow an unlimited number of substitutions which must also be listed on the game card prior to the beginning of the match otherwise those players are ineligible so basically they are saying that you have to mention your substitutes who are going to take part you can't just bring someone out of the thin air and same play you have to give all the details of substitutes and the playing 11 before the game substitutions may only enter the field at the halfway line upon the referee's approval and after the player being subbed off has left the pitch so this has been modified a little bit so the player in the premier league at least the player has to leave from the nearest touch line the goalkeeper may be substituted with anyone on the pitch or any eligible substitute on the bench during a game stoppage so that is crystal clear i don't i don't think so i have to explain it further so we complete the third law and they we still have 14 laws you know so i'll just say two facts statistics you know because i have time and maybe you want to listen i don't know about the second part So Dimitri Payet of Marseille former West Ham player has made the most accurate crosses from corners in Ligue 1 this season with 34 amazing he was linked back to West Ham but probably the West Ham faithfuls and the ultras won't accept him back Getafe have received the most yellow cards in La Liga this season with 71 as a fun fact in the Premier League who has got more can you say you can you can message the answers to the Facebook page the VAR show but Don't take the trouble I'll say you Arsenal have received the most with 60 Manchester City have had the most shots on target per game in the Premier League this season with 6.96 I'll say you two more I said two but I have already said three so I'll say you two more just because I have written it down Lionel Messi has had the most assists in La Liga this season with 8 I'm just searching for good ones you know Okay since most of you watch Premier League Wilfred Zaha of Crystal Palace and former 
Manchester United player has attempted the most dribbles in the Premier League this season with 192. Also a fun fact, Zaha was the last player to be signed by Sir Alex Ferguson. Trent Alexander-Arnold has attempted the most passes in the opposition half in the Premier League this season with 1312. That is 1312. That's amazing. RB Leipzig have had their passes intercepted the most number of times per game in the Bundesliga this season with 13.9 per game. So on that note, that is it from us this week. Hope you enjoyed our show. We'll see you again next week, same day, same time. I mean, the day is Friday, not the date. Hope you had a good show. I mean, I hope you liked listening to our voice. You know, today we had a new voice, Mukund, with us. So have a good day or rather whatever part of the day is remaining. A good week. Enjoy your weekend. Do not drink and drive. Till next week. Adios. And we will play the song. We are one. Ole Ola by Pitbull. And next week, I think Mukun will take over fully. So, I don't know when I'll see you next. Maybe after the week after that. So, enjoy the song. <laughs>